Rise of the Ronin is an open world action game full of fights, blood, and political powers at play. You may be familiar with Team Ninja and their games from the past. There were some similarities between those games and this one, but a few new things to watch out for. With a large world to explore and an interesting combat system to figure out, this game may be right up your alley. But before you run out and try it for yourself, please stick around and allow me to explain what the game has to offer before I rate it and place it on the shelves behind me. The Shogunate has made a deal with the Americans. During the late 1850s in Japan, there was a lot of talk about opening commerce with the United States, causing a rift between major powers in Japan. During all of this, you play a nameless ronin with your own goals in mind, but still forced right in the middle of those world-changing events. You'll meet important people from history, help them with their goals, and hopefully get some assistance for your own mission. The actions and choices you make may shift how Japan ends up. We would like to possess the same power as you. If the opportunity arises, kill Perry. Understood. The combat in the game was very flashy and cool, but there was a lot of blood flying everywhere with every hit. And you end up taking some limbs or a head off when finishing a fight with someone. You may run into some animals to fight, but most of the combat will be with other human characters. The language was fairly clean, but the gore was awesomely over the top. I loved it, but preferred my kids not be around while I played. Being a ronin can be liberating, but I wonder if it's worth the trouble. The open world was broken up into smaller sections for you to find collectibles and assist the locals. It started off feeling big, but quickly got smaller as I explored with the few collectibles in each area and the ability to fast travel to any banner I'd already found. On the map, you can see how far along you are with finding everything in a zone, giving you rewards after you're done. The small sections didn't have much to find, so you could cash in for the rewards quite fast and move on to the next zone. <laughs> At the start, combat seemed simple, with a few different button combos to use. But when you find the plethora of different weapons to play with, each with their own distinctive moves and multiple fighting styles to choose from, things started to get a little overwhelming. When fighting enemies, depending on their style, yours may be super effective or not effective at all. In those cases, you can swap to a secondary weapon or change your style on the fly during the fight. There was a definite learning curve for the combat system in this game. to go with something that suits you. Rise of the Ronin has plenty of weapons for you to choose from and gain experience with. The more you use a weapon, the more proficient you become, unlocking new moves and stat boosts, and overall effectiveness using that weapon. You even learn from your enemies. Taking them out can give you a little proficiency experience from the weapon they were using. On top of in-game stat boosts, you will learn the small nuances involved with the weapons, making you better overall. Based off real historical events, the story in the game was very politically charged between shogunats and anti-shogunats. You'll meet real people from history while trying to navigate your own story through the mess everyone is making. It is fun to learn about history, but I doubt a lot of what you experience in the game is realistic. Although there was a lot of entertaining combat and such, there were plenty of boring scenes of important people making important decisions about things completely out of your power. With this momentous agreement, Japan opened up to the world. Now is the time to show the world the tenacity of our blades. While playing, there were a couple choices to be made during missions, usually implying a side of the whole story you want to join. Gaining renown with one of the sides will garner rewards and titles. However, most of the time, it seemed like I was playing for both sides, making friends in one mission and fighting them in the next. It was a confusing process trying to figure out 
who I was really helping all the while working on my own personal mission. I'm sure the choices made in the game affect some parts of the story, but shortly into the game you gain access to replay any mission, making different choices and changing things up a bit. Why are you working with the outsiders? <laughs> That's the spirit. I knew you had a bit of fight. While on your own mission, you'll meet a lot of different people on both sides, befriending some while fighting others, sometimes even both. The important characters you create a bond with will have their bond increased through certain actions, rewarding you with items and better fighting skills. Some of your bondmates can be selected to take on missions with you, while others ask that you accomplish specific tasks to increase their bond. Some abilities and gear are locked behind bond levels. You can view your bonds and possible rewards in the menu. Darling cats have run away, and none of them have returned to me. Part of exploring a big open world is the small collectibles or activities scattered about to distract you. In every minor section of the world, you can find cats, take pictures, and hunt down some unruly fugitives. Most of the collectibles are connected to a character you have a bond with, who will sell you special items needed for the skill tree or gear that was part of a set. Depending on what type of character you build, these will be important things to check out. Is there anything else you would like? Welcome. What do you need? Something that's common in most Team Ninja games is the procurement of so much gear everywhere you go. Equipment will be dropped by enemies and found in chests with varied rarities and stat boosts. It could get a little overwhelming trying to manage all of it, but once you figure out what specific pieces of gear you're looking for, you can ignore the rest by selling it or dismantling to get parts for upgrading your gear. Thankfully, there is an easy way to filter and select all of the gear you want to get rid of at merchants, so you're not stuck for hours managing your inventory. You got it. I've been a big fan of the Team Ninja games since Neo 2. I put a lot of time into that and other titles like Wu Long, and had certain expectations for this game. Their games usually take place during actual historical events and are full of real people from history. The games are so fun, I go out and do a little research of my own to learn what was really happening during that time. It's cool that a game makes me want to learn a little more history. However, this was probably the most realistic game they've made. No scary yokai fights or supernatural events happening. It still had that almost Souls-like feel with checkpoints I would respawn at and the loss of experience on death that I could go back and retrieve, and a difficult to grasp combat system. But this game had a difficulty setting, making combat less rigorous if you wanted to change it. When I started the game, I was having a very hard time with the combat. It didn't feel like I had any iframes when dodging, and I'm a big fan of iframes. And the enemies moved so fast I couldn't comprehend or keep up. Early in, I ran into a boss that just felt mean. She moved so fast, and it seemed like if I messed up a block or counter, I was doomed to take hits for her entire combo. I eventually beat her after leveling up a bit and getting new gear, but it still felt like a fluke in the end. Eventually, I started to get better with my timing as I learned new fighting skills and fought a lot of different enemies, but I still don't feel like I ever really understood how to take full advantage in the combat. It's equally fun and frustrating. Most of the story was very political and boring. I'm not very good at remembering names, and there were a lot of names dropped during the cutscenes. So and so doing this, or we have to stop that person. I couldn't follow and just wanted to get back into the fights, more often than not. Don't get me wrong, there were a couple intriguing spots, but overall I found the story not to be very engaging. Rise of the Ronin was visually appealing, with the over-the-top blood splatter and flashy combat scenes, but in the world, it did feel a little lacking considering the price and times we're in. And that's only if you really start to look close. The game didn't stutter or freeze anywhere, that was nice. And it wasn't terrible to look at, it just seemed to not meet expectations. After figuring out how to fight, I did start to enjoy the game, but there were still plenty of frustrating fights. The kind of frustration that just makes me want to quit, not the kind that makes me want to get better and succeed. Some fights just felt unfair but not many. There were plenty of tough fights that gave me a hard time but felt like I could succeed if I tried just 
a little harder or maybe some new moves. There is a little replayability with the multiple choices you can make while playing, but not restarting the whole game. With the ability to go back and replay missions, there's no need. But the game is quite large. It might be all I can handle getting through it once. Maybe trying it out again years down the road if I wanted a little more abuse. Have you played any Team Ninja games or tried out Rise of the Ronin yet? Let me know in the comments, and while you do that, I'm gonna get these ratings underway. The visuals came out to a solid 3 out of 5. The story, although fascinating and based off of true events, had a difficult time keeping my attention. I'm giving it a 2. The gameplay was unique and interesting. I kind of enjoyed figuring it out. It's getting a 3. Replayability was so-so, I'm handing out another 2. With all the varying levels of frustration and elation, I'm feeling a 3. Giving Rise of the Ronin a total score of 2.6 out of 5, earning it a spot right there on the mid shelf. It does have some complex difficulties to figure out if you really want a challenge and many ways to get through a fight. I personally really miss the fun supernatural twists they would throw in their games. And hey, since you've made it this far, you might be interested in some other open world or Souls-like games I reviewed. Check out the playlists over there, you never know, those may be holding the games you're looking for.